Okay, so how can we <clears throat> improve our measurements that we have taken? Well, most people will realize that you can extend the time for measurements over, so you can have, um, if you're going to do a period of a pendulum, that as it swings, you don't just let it swing once, okay, you let it swing back and forth about 10 times, that increases the time. So example of why this is better, if you had a reaction time of 0.2 seconds, so that's how <coughs> quickly you react, and you had a period of 2 seconds, so just one swing was 2 seconds, and you just measured for that one swing, then you could be out by 10%. Now if you actually measured for 10 swings, the time will be 20 seconds, your reaction time does not change, so you now only have a 1% error. So by increasing the time, you have made your error um, much less. Also, if you think about a 1mm ruler, okay, so one that has the millimeter divisions, if you measure something that was 2 millimeters, we say that you could be out by a whole millimeter on a, one, on a normal millimeter ruler, so we could actually be out by almost 50%. So, making things larger is a good way of improving your measurements. The other ones to remember are ones like parallax, which is making sure that you're looking at your scale 90 degrees. So, here's my measuring cylinder. Okay, you've got your scale up the side. When you're looking with your eye, that thing is an eye, when you're looking with your eye, you look at it straight on, like that, instead of at an angle. Okay, so that's parallax. The other one to remember is measuring at the bottom of the meniscus, so at the bottom of the meniscus, um, and just things like that. So making measurements bigger, better, always what you want to do. Good one for sand. Let's say we pour some, we want to measure the volume of some sand. Okay. You can't just grab a ruler and measure the height, width, and so on, because you're not counting the space in between. If you want to know the volume of actual sand, you could place it into a measuring cylinder and look for that change in height. So some better some some terms here. So accuracy is how good your measurement is. In other words, how close it is to the actual value. Okay, so um, if you have an actual value of about 10.0, but you get something around about 11.5 on average, then it's not very accurate. However, if you get something about 10.1, then you can say you are quite accurate. However, what's precision? Precision is, essentially, it's the scale. Okay? If you compare a centimeter ruler, so one of the centimeter divisions compared to a millimeter ruler, then this one is more precise. Error is how far you could be off in each measurement. Repeat, this checks for errors. Greater, that what I mean by that is you know how you make those longer swings, you use one washer in a measuring cylinder, uh, sorry, you use ten washers in a measuring cylinder to find the volume of one, things like that. Parallax we talked about, and meniscus we talked about. Okay, the micrometer is an excellent uh, device to measure uh, much smaller measurements, okay. What you do is you put your object here, put your object in the middle there, okay, in between the teeth, and then what you do is you then uh, dial this thing up, so then it clamps on. Now how you measure it is you use two scales. We look at this scale along here first, okay, so we're looking at this one first, okay, on the main sleeve, 
and then we use the thimble. So let's say you, you tighten it up and what we've got to do is actually this page here we've actually got an example so something's been tightened up and we've got it. Now these are all in millimetres so there's an arrow. Now it's got a millimetres there so this one here is one millimetre okay the one underneath it are the halves so in this case, if I just put that in there, a little bit more, in there, okay, that one, that one there is going to be 1.5 millimeters. Now if this edge of this thing lined up exactly with one of those lines, then it would be 1 millimeter or 1.5 millimeters. But we can actually go further than that. We can look at this thing and see where it lines up. So actually, let's look at it now. We've got down here. We've got about 5.5 something millimeters. Okay, 5.5 something millimeters. So what we're going to do is find out what that something is. Okay. Well, it's not really something, but it's actually going to be five. It's actually, if you look at it. It's not on the 5.5, it's slightly larger than 5.5. So um, it's going to be 5.5 plus 0. Point something. Okay, It's going to be slightly larger than 5.5. How do we find it? We look at what this number here is. This spindle goes up to 50, Okay, which is 0. 0.5 millimeters. Okay, 0. 0.50. And we look for where it's lining up on the, on the main shaft there. And it looks to be about 25, 26, 27, 28. Okay, so that means it's 0 0.28 millimeters. So we've got 5.5 plus 0.28 millimeters. So that means the actual answer is 5.78 millimeters. Okay, when you're measuring the time, you know, dropping a ball from the roof, what I'll do. You would uh, drop it a few times and measure that. Okay, you want to know the you want the largest distance possible. Okay, so the greatest distance. So this has to be quite large. Okay, um, and you would probably repeat because you'll find your your measurements will change. Single period of a pendulum. Remember, you don't do one. No to one. You do ten or more. Okay. And we'll look at this in class.